Hi, this is Enes from Never Stop Trucking. I want to talk today to you about everything that's wrong in the trucking industry. I uh, gathered together 11 things. Uh, there is more, of course, uh, I could probably go on and maybe come up with at least 100 things that are wrong in this industry. Uh, I see a lot of people complaining about everything, but uh, here are a few uh, main things that I think should be changed. How to change them? Honestly, I don't know. I guess uh, it's a, a good way uh, to start is to talk about it. And then who knows, uh, maybe we will all together uh, accomplish something. Maybe uh, we will change at least some of these things. Okay, the first thing that I want to talk about is the insurance and the insurance costs and um, everything uh, that uh, is uh, connected to uh, liability, cargo, physical insurance, uh, occupational insurance, uh, all these insurances that we have in place and they all have certain role and they're very complicated and when you buy insurance, you know, they cover everything. You know, they cover everything, but uh, when uh, it's time to make a claim or to get some money, uh, then suddenly they don't uh, cover everything. They only cover the main things and, you know, you have your deductible. And then even if you dare to uh, make a claim, then you can see your rates going up. So uh, a lot of people are just paying cash. You know, if there is a small claim like a uh, thousand, a couple of thousand dollars, a lot of trucking companies will just pay cash out of their own pockets so they don't have a claim and makes uh, me wonder why do we have insurance in the first place you know if if we have to pay uh, out of uh, our pocket for repairs uh, for a damage and then you know you have deductibles and all that but okay you know insurance is a must it's it's good to cover you you know because uh, no, none of these companies would be able to cover all those astronomical costs. But, um, you know, $10,000 per truck for liability and cargo is actually considered good. Uh, a lot of companies are paying way more, uh, you know, twice as much more per truck. That's a lot of money. That's like $500 uh, a week per truck. And then uh, a lot of new companies, you know, new authorities, they have to pay even more, like thirty, forty thousand dollars per truck per year. That's a lot of money, okay? And you have all those regulations. All the states have different rules, and then all the agents have different uh, carriers that they work with, and you have different insurance carriers that will only work uh, with uh, established companies. And you only have like a couple of insurances that will work with new carriers and it's a mess as far as insurance goes uh, it's really a mess it's hard uh, there has to be something that regulates those insurances there has to be something that on the federal level you know we all pay same uh, uh, rates um, why why uh, can a company x pay this much amount this much money and then company uh, y and z pay uh, more or less it's really not uh, regulated and these uh, prices go up. So every year uh, you have a renewal for insurance uh, as a trucking authority. The, you never know if the rates are going to go up and you never know if you have to pay like 10 or, or 20 or 25 percent down. And that's a lot of money. If you have 10 trucks, you know, let's say uh, you have 10 trucks, you have a really good rate and, and your uh, quote is $100,000 a year. Uh, then you still have to come up with $20,000 and pay it down. And uh, you don't know, like, let's just say that this year you have $100,000 for 10 trucks, and then one truck does something bad, and then they raise up all the prices for all the trucks next next year, and who knows, maybe it can double. So now you have $200,000 a year and $40,000 in a down payment, and that can just uh, uh, make you go, go down your company Next thing is no control over prices. This is a, a wrong thing to do to begin with, you know, to call our prices like market rates. Uh, we are not Wall Street. Uh, uh, we don't work uh, with uh, currencies. We don't work with stocks. 
uh, we don't work with something that that's that should not be that that cannot be controlled. Like you know, you can't control the stock uh, prices. Uh, but why are the truck rates considered to be in the same um, category as these stock prices? You know, and to even call them market rates, there should not be a market for trucking industry market rates. There should be. Uh, a price that we set, you know, let us set our own prices as trucking companies. And, uh, you know, if you can make some money, uh, if you're doing a load for $4 a mile, and you can make some money, great. If there is a company that can make money for $3.50, uh, okay, they can make uh, uh, money and they can be profitable and you can go with them you can buy their services but to let uh, something uncontrollable uh, out of touch out of, re- of reach out of touch with reality how can you know th- this is a multi-billion dollar industry and how can uh, something somewhere control our prices you know like if you buy a TV or you buy a car or uh, a sofa or anything, you know, you go to a store and they um, calculate labor that's included in, in, in the process of making a sofa, the materials, the transportation, um, and then the profit. And then they say, oh, this sofa is going to cost $500. Why not have uh, markets for sofa? So, you know, one year, you know, they cost $100. You know, how is that going to make it profitable uh, for the furniture company? It, it can't be profitable, okay, because they need uh, at least two or three hundred dollars just to make it, you know. Uh, but in our case, you know, it's decided that this load is going to be uh, paying two dollars a mile, while the fuel prices are almost seven dollars. A gallon and then maintenance prices are 100% up uh, as opposed to, you know, a couple of years ago. Equipment prices are 100% up almost. Um, insurance is up. Uh, paying uh, company drivers, it's 100% up as, it, as opposed to what it was like uh, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, but our rates are same or maybe even smaller. And then when you talk to brokers, when you talk to people, they say, well, you know, those are the market rates. You know, it's not that simple. Well, it should be that simple, okay? Uh, it should be that simple. Uh, why why not have us control our prices? And then I set my price and I say, this is my price, okay? And if I'm profitable, I'll do it. And no one in their right mind will run a load uh, with a loss on it, okay? So no one will come up and say, hey, you know, I'll do this load for $2 a mile. No, you know, we have to be profitable. Let's do it for 3 4 $5 a mile. A while uh, ago, I made a video um, that we need $5 per mile before these uh, fuel prices went way up, before the maintenance prices went up, before it, 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 we even had, you know, a lot of floats on the board, and I said we need to have $5 um a mile to to be profitable and then people started laughing at me uh, uh, i had comments on on the channel like you don't understand the industry it doesn't work that way ha ha, ha you know you'll never get it okay um we are not getting it right now but we should be getting it and we should be fighting uh for for that you know we should be fighting for a way to set up our own prices and then just tell you this is how much i need to move this load from point A to point B, and that's my rate. Same as uh, if you have someone coming over to your house and uh, do landscaping or uh, do like um, carpeting work, uh, build a deck for you, and they come out and they say, well, I'm going to build this deck for you uh, for $5,000, and that's my price. You know, you may be able to negotiate a little bit, but most likely you won't be able because they'll just say, well, you know, fine. You know, I have like 10 other customers that are waiting for me. I'll just go over there. No one is going to be saying, uh, well, the market rates uh, for building a deck uh, this size are now are like $2,000 or $3,000. No, it doesn't work like that way. Same in trucking industry. 
Um, so hopefully uh, we'll change that somehow soon. You know, we, at least we should talk about it and you know try uh, to fight for it. Uh, next thing is the fuel prices um, in uh, United States. For some reason, diesel uh, is. Uh, cost more uh, as opposed in Europe uh, it's usually around the same or even less uh, but here uh, diesel costs more uh, even though uh, diesel engine engines tend to uh, use less fuel and then even though here uh, in United States um, there's a, a trucking industry so big that you know there are so many <laughs> fuel uh, stations truck stops uh, for for fuel for trucks, it's not even funny. Uh, so, you know, with uh, fuel prices, diesel prices uh, being in a range of between uh, uh, six and seven dollars per gallon, um, there is no way that uh, you can be profitable uh, as a trucking company. And uh, like uh, last last week, uh, one of my trucks um, used. Um, uh, it was the, the bill for that week was two thousand and seven hundred dollars just for fuel, <laughs> and uh, last year it was, you know, around thousand maybe twelve thirteen hundred a week, and now it's uh, it's that much, you know, you you know tr trucks drive all over the United States they need fuel to spend that much money on fuel. You know, we are making, we are all making someone rich uh, while a lot of companies are going down to all these costs combined. So fuel prices are one of the things uh, that, that's wrong that we can't control. Uh, again, you can't control the fuel prices. You know, they always come up with excuses like, you know, Middle East, Russia, uh, supplies, you know, drilling, uh, reserves, uh, barrel of, you know, crude, you know, whatever. Uh, there, these prices have to be regulated, at least for, for trucks, you know, there, there should be a higher, a highest uh, price that's um, legally allowed for, you know, at least diesel, you know, if not uh, all kinds of fuel. Um, uh, if if you if you don't control fuel prices, if they just go up as they please, uh, uh, that triggers a lot of things. And then here in trucking industry, uh, fuel prices uh, are one of the two uh, biggest costs you know that we as trucking companies have. And then just to see them that high is just killing everyone, and it's not good for the trucking industry. Uh, next thing that's wrong is the equipment prices. Uh, the equipment prices are up uh, almost 100%. I mean, that's that's not. Um, I don't have a, a, a specific uh, report on that, but I'm just uh, uh, telling this from uh, my own experience uh, because right now uh, a brand new truck costs uh, twice as much as it was. Uh, I would say like um, maybe 10 years ago or even less. Okay. And um, it's not just about uh, brand new trucks because you can't get them. It's hard to uh, get when you have to wait, you know, be on a waiting list. But uh, that also, you know, uh, triggers um, prices for uh, used equipment as well. So right now used equipment um, is ridiculously uh, high. Now, if you have a, a property that, you know, where you can, uh, where, you know, it's considered an investment like a house, uh, a home or a piece of land uh, where you can invest money and over time those um, values go up, okay? That's different because you you have money in that property and uh, it's valued now more, but there is a low risk uh, that that property is going to be destroyed or damaged. Um, you don't use it uh, okay it doesn't depreciate like the equipment does um, you know equipment is used and you know after 5 10 uh, uh, 15 years 20 years it's unusable okay so the more you use it uh, uh, the less it is worth but in our case here they went the, the values went up okay now this is not real value 
uh, this is just uh, something um, that everyone is taking advantage of because, you know, you can't uh, find a truck or trailer right now. And that that's why they, you know, raise those prices because, you know, people are greedy, companies are greedy, they just want to make more money. For example, drive and trailer, uh, you know, uh, right now, I mean, like two years ago, a drive and trailer was a $30,000 brand new, like 30, 35 maybe. Uh, but now it's 70000 And what's also um, stupid is that uh, used trailers that are like five, uh, six, seven, eight years old, uh, you know, are getting sold for like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. And they are not worth that much. It's just a, 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 a tin can. You know, it, it's got wheels, a floor. And it's got walls. That's it. That's a trailer. It doesn't have, uh, you know, a computer or, you know, uh, parts, you know, an engine. It's just a tin can. Okay, why is that worth so much? It's no way that trailer is worth that much money. Uh, people just um, and companies, they're just trying to take advantage of the situation. So that's another thing that's wrong with all this, uh, that, um, you know, you now have to, if you want to work, you want to drive, you know, like you, let's, let's say you have a truck, but you need a trailer or you don't even have a truck and you want to get one of them. Um, you have to pay a lot of money for something that's not worth that much, but you have to buy it if you want to work. And then, uh, you have to spend uh, a lot of money if you have cash or, you know, if you're getting a loan. Uh, then you're going to have a, a, a much higher payment as opposed to like two years ago uh, with these rates that are uh, way less than they were uh, a year or two years ago. Now, rates uh, versus costs, uh, that's the next thing that's wrong with the trucking industry. And that has been the case uh, for a long time. Only last year, uh, we saw some uh, rates going up after, you know, the pandemic um, you know, everything was slowed down and then no one was ordering anything or delivering. And then all of a sudden, everything wanted, every, everyone wanted everything. And then um, the prices went up. And those prices uh, should be normal prices for trucking industry. Okay, those prices are, are normal uh, to, to, you know, it's normal to make that much money. Because um, just imagine like how much, how many things, uh, you can put on a trailer, okay? Most of these trailers are 53 feet long. Uh, you can put a lot of things, okay? Try sending that one packet, like one box uh, in, uh, you know, a UPS or uh, postal services or FedEx uh, and see how much it, that's going to cost you to uh, send it like 500 miles away, okay? Now, imagine all those boxes on one truck and we are getting paid pennies for that okay so it, it should be way more considering that you uh, you know you have depreciation um, you have to pay the driver uh, equipment uh, all that transportation insurance uh, fuel um, imagine all the things you have to pay in order for that load to move and then con uh, compare it to what they give us how much money they give us uh, for those rates um, now, these uh, trucks and trailers are, you know, right now, it, it, they're like, you know, the combo is like, let's just say $200,000 for the truck and trailer. Okay, let's just say two, it could be more, it could be less. But uh, uh, they are renting um, like these uh, shippers, uh, uh, the brokers and whoever they work with, they are renting that truck and trailer and the driver, you know, the 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 uh, human um, workforce from you while you are paying for all the costs, for all the, the, the fuel, uh, you know, the risk involved, um, you know, with the DOT, with uh, traffic laws, uh, with costs that, you know, you are paying everything that's connected to that piece of equipment and they pay you um thousand dollars to move a load you know for 500 miles you know they pay one thousand dollars and that's all day for the equipment now go out and try to rent an equipment that's worth two hundred thousand dollars for a whole day uh, uh, with uh, an operator and see how much is that gonna cost you it's gonna cost you five 
$10,000. You know, uh, two years ago, I had uh, a guy that, uh, and then it, the, the rates, uh, the costs were somewhat, you know, normal uh, two years ago. And I had a guy that was, uh, you know, he went into a ditch and it was total damage for the truck and trailer. And the towing company came out and the bill was like around $30,000. Uh, for two towing trucks that came out, uh, pulled him, pulled out the truck, and then um, transported, you know, pulled the truck like not even 20 miles away from there. It was almost $30,000, and the insurance said, yeah, that's normal. We've seen much, much higher bills. So, you know, that, if that's normal for them, why shouldn't it be normal for us? Why shouldn't it be normal for us uh, to transport that load for 500 miles to transport it for $5,000? You know, I'm, I'm, you know, going way more, but, you know, $5,000, why not? Um, so that's, that's another thing, uh, uh, rates that are give, they're giving us uh, versus the costs that we uh, have to cover, okay? Another thing that's wrong with the trucking industry is that there is no room to park those trucks, um, not just overnight, but like to store the trucks uh, if you have... Uh, a lot of trucks or even one trucks if you truck if you have a driver or you're an owner operator uh, you know when you get home uh, it's hard to find room uh, to park the truck you know unless you live somewhere where you uh, like if you have a ba big backyard if you're out in country but you, if you're in a city uh, you have to park in the front of uh, some kind of business if they let you and then you always run a risk of them you know, um, telling you to go away, or uh, uh, there are a lot of places uh, right now that will charge you, and those charges can be really big uh, for you to, to keep that truck there over the weekend. And then when you go on the road, um, you know, uh, the trucks are, truck stops are always full, the rest areas are full. So especially if you're on the East Coast, uh, it's hard to find room. Uh, most companies uh, will not let drivers stay there, uh, overnight so that's uh, a big problem in trucking industry and uh, everyone is complaining about that especially at night uh, where, when you know drivers uh, are tired they run out of hours uh, they want to come close to delivery as close as to delivery as they can uh, but they have to um, you know improvise uh, park on the side of the street or on a rest area, somewhere where it's not safe. Uh, government oversight is the next one, you know, with electronic logbooks and then all these new rules, you know, they they come up with uh, a lot of new things. For example, uh, the clearing house, uh, drug clearing house, you know, ELD mandate, um, they're, they keep changing the rules and they keep coming hard after uh, the trucks, the truck drivers, and uh, the trucking companies, okay? Um, I understand that everyone has to be safe as long as, uh, you know, the company is safe and they're doing whatever they can, uh, then, you know, we should be let to uh, do our uh, work. And, you know, these uh, fines that they have are astronomical and uh, most companies can't afford those fines if they find something wrong so um, a lot of drivers are complaining about that the you know government getting involved uh, in our business uh, you know a lot of regulations um, you have um, different uh, uh, not not just industries but maybe even branches of trucking industry that should be um, should have some kind of oversight uh, like, for example, uh, brokerages and, uh, you know, shippers and receivers. And, and that's one of my next points here. But, uh, you know, brokers, uh, you know, if they decide not to pay you, uh, what are you going to do? Um, if they decide to lie to you, what are you going to do? Nothing. You can't do anything. Um, so maybe if there's going to be an oversight for uh, trucks, trucking authorities, maybe there should be oversight uh, for other um, industries and or branches of trucking as well, uh, so maybe that's uh, that's what next what we should fight for. You know, at least have some kind of uh, regulations uh, for uh, brokers, for shippers and receivers, for insurances. Um, you know, uh, uh, fuel companies um, and everything uh, that's involved uh, with trucking. 
Uh, now, unloading times and loading times uh, at uh, facilities are just ridiculous, and they're going, uh, they're becoming longer and longer. Especially uh, big warehouses, big DCs. They, uh, most of them, are not very organized, and it's just ridiculous. Um, you know, if m most of them have computers and softwares, uh, different softwares that uh, uh, run uh, their inventory and their scheduling, but those are not functioning. Uh, they uh, order so many trucks at the same time, and then when when a truck shows up, they come up with excuses like uh, uh, these. Uh, no one ordered these trucks and we have so much work we can't make it well why do you order so many trucks if you can't handle it um, if you don't have that much uh, manpower uh, why do you even uh, order the freight okay uh, they act like they own the truck and the driver and the trailer and they just hijack it uh, for several hours, uh, maybe even a full day, and you can't do anything about it. Uh, if you leave, the broker is not going to pay you. Uh, if you leave with the load, they might put a claim on your load or, you know, call the police after you. Um, it's it's a big becoming a big, big problem uh, where these loading and unloading times are long and you can't do anything you know you call these companies they're not going to even answer you call the broker they say they come up with a lot of excuses like uh, oh i emailed the customer and we are waiting um you know this never happened before and uh, it just makes me not want to go to these big dcs anymore and then you know when a truck pulls up there there are so many trucks they're waiting uh, that that's it's not even uh, funny and you know drivers uh, for sure hate that and I don't blame them uh, but it's it's how it is you never know uh, where you're gonna get stuck um, there should be some kind of flow some kind of oversight uh, for this or you know they should be paying a big fee immediately okay uh, like some companies have these fines you know uh, if you're late they they will not unload you until you pay them the late fee there should be something like that uh, in place, like, you know, immediately pay us immediately uh, straight directly from that uh, receivership or not wait for the broker. And then they wait for someone else and they wait for someone else. And after seven days, you might get your detention or layover and it's not even worth it. You know, it's not even uh, as much as it should be. It should be paid on, on the spot and we should be able to determine our uh, rate like this is how much money we need uh, per hour for detention or for a layover not whatever you decide um, it's uh, straight up offensive uh, if you pay 25 30 dollars uh, for one hour that's ne nearly not enough and that's only after two or even three hours uh, they don't even count those those two three hours are free um, a truck should be unloaded in less than 30 minutes. I don't see, you know, with all these uh, forklifts and uh, I, I, there is no excuse not to unload a truck in less than 30 minutes, okay? Everything after that, you know, we should be paid for that. And that's another thing that's wrong with the trucking industry. Uh, another thing that uh, uh, we don't like is that uh, drivers everywhere they go, uh, they don't treat them well. And that's uh, uh, even some trucking companies, even some dispatchers, receivers and shippers, some brokers, truck stops, police, you know, DOT. Everywhere they go, they go drivers don't get uh, the respect that, you know, they deserve or that a human being uh, deserves. You know, they uh, just let them sit in the truck uh, and wait for hours you know, you don't have access to food. They don't give you access to uh, restrooms, to use the restrooms. And that's uh, one of the uh, main, you know, human needs. And they just say, well, this, you know, we don't have uh, restrooms for customers or like for public. Yeah, that's what they say. No public restrooms. Well, we are not public, you know, uh, drivers. Uh, we are... Um, mm, people that are doing business with you and then if you're going to keep a driver there for two hours then you better provide them uh, with a restroom with uh, food place to rest you know and and treat them with respect 
and uh, not not treat them like trash. So uh, a lot of drivers are leaving this industry because um, they don't get the respect uh, that they deserve. And then these next two are also somehow some somewhat connected. Uh, driver benefits. Uh, most trucking companies don't offer driver benefits, and uh, I know why. I am. I used to be a driver. Now I'm on the other side, and I know all the costs that are involved. Uh, with uh, having the benefits, having the health insurance, uh, workers' compensation, 401k, um, sick pay, all that. You know, even now, uh, you know, the trucking industry is not profitable at all. Uh, but even if if uh, a truck, a trucking companies were to provide all these benefits, then they would not make any money. Uh, sure, that's not an excuse, uh, but that's the reason why most trucking, most small trucking companies don't uh, offer benefits because of the costs. Uh, bigger companies, they, you know, have discounts, uh, they, they have uh, better profitability, and they can afford it. Smaller companies can't uh, afford any of that. And uh, we, as a smaller company, we should be uh, offered um, a way to, to offer drivers uh, the benefits that they deserve, and, and then uh, driver pay. Uh, driver pay is is a big. Uh, there's a big debate about driver pay. Uh, should it be paid per hour or, or per mile or per day or percentage? Um, a lot of people have different uh, points and different views. It's been a standard that uh, drivers get paid per per mile. Uh, and then most companies pay that way. Uh, some local companies do uh, hourly pay, and then some over-the-road companies uh, do a percentage pay. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, this is not fair a fair pay to the driver. There should be uh, something, and I am not an expert in that. I am not the one to come up with the solution. Uh, but there should be something in place that uh, offers uh, drivers a fair way to get paid. Uh, where everyone is going uh, to be profitable and and then you know make some money and get the money that they deserve for the work that they have done this way drivers if they don't drive they don't get paid um, and then um, you know they're away from the home and uh, like you, you know for uh, 10 hours a day they are in their sleeper berth and they're you know, not getting paid for that, even though they are not at home, they're technically at work. Uh, sorry for the long video, but uh, I just had to vent and uh, tell you about all these things that I think are wrong with the trucking industry. Come back for more, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you around.